welcome everyone it's the world mental health day world mental health week and um, we're here at novo symposium uh this is what the first the fourth yes. the first started one. in 2015 yes and i've attended every one of them <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> So, um, you know, it's a great time to discuss uh, mental health and how it's affecting our society. I'm very excited uh, for the panel that we have today. Just a really nice, casual discussion. And, you know, we want to discuss more and talk about solutions. So I'm starting from my far left. I have Dr. Osas, Dr. Deji Osasona. Popularly referred to doc as Dr. Osas. You're welcome, Dr. Osas. Thank you for joining us. Dr. Osas, I'll come back to you. We have Dr. Dorothy, who is the host and the MD CEO of Novo Health Africa, host of Novo Symposium 2019. I'm welcome, happy Dr. that we're gathered here once again. And, and thank you. <laughs> we have Dr. Naya Undupu. Did I say that right? Yes, Dr. Naya, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, and then we'll have the catalyst himself, Larry Lushola, on the discussion. Yes. So before we, you know, just to give some context, before we um, start diving into the discussion, I'd like for you to say just a little bit about yourself and what you do. Everybody here on this panel, everybody here, even, you know, sitting with us, they're all somehow, you know, connected you know to the work with mental health yeah. and you know the industry and everything that affects our health and our, uh, you know everything that concerns our wellness so just a little bit of background one minute introduction of you and what you do so I'll start now from the catalyst all right thank you very much um, you know um, I, I just simply help people live wholesome life for, for you to transition from where you currently are, you need that wholesome life. You need to have a sound mind. Um, so I say that I, I transform lives by transforming minds. And mental health is really, really key to what I do. So, you know, um, it's really um, an honor to be here, uh, to be speaking to mental health issues on the Mental Health Day. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Neya. Um, I have a passion for mental health. Beyond treating of mental health challenges, mm -hmm. I also focus on mental wellness, preventive, mm. preventive care for everyone because I know that everyone has a mental health. And over the years, I have come to realize that before people get to the point where they have to seek for treatment, a lot okay. could have been prevented. Mm. So that's why my focus has been more, more of interventions, early stages even before things deteriorate in addition to that i also run a radio show on inspiration fm for over four years where we talk about mental health mental wellness thank, thank you, you dr mayor dr dorothy well, I'm, uh, I'm dr dorothy and jeff namani i'm the founder and ceo of noble health africa i'm a mental health enthusiast that's how i'll call it i i love to see um to look at medicine from a holistic point of view i know that you don't and i want people to know that you don't have to take drugs for every illness you know illnesses come in different forms it could be physical it could be mental it could be social and i find out that in this community people tend to concentrate more on physical uh, challenges uh, my background is that of medicine i mean a medical doctor I have a background in a specialty in public health and I also have a study in healthcare financing and control of infectious diseases. Thank you. Dr. Osas. Right. Um, my name is Deji Osasono and I also have a medical doctor training as a background training. However, my special interest is in behavioral change interventions. I change behavior like I always say, I change behavior to improve wellness and performance. 
So all I do is preventing interventions, and I believe uh, there are behaviors that sabotage people's mental wellness. And uh, if you don't identify them early, they can push people to a level of mental challenge that will predispose them to suicidal tendencies. So I love uh, preaching the gospel of mental health <laughs> across all boards, not just at the individual level, even organizational level. There's no health without mental health. No you health know, mental I didn't health. even know that Dr. Osas has a a medical background and I'm happy to, to hear it because you know behavioral changes is something that all medical doctors should preach because there's some um, illnesses like if you're somebody who is managing diabetes or hypertension or, or even you know we ask for you to consider um, changing you know, behavioral changes so those are the things that can help you manage something like that so just want us to dive in based on the theme for World Mental Health Day, which is on suicide prevention. Um, what, what do you think, you know, about the rate of uh, suicides now, compared to before? And now the recent, especially 2019, what do you think, Dr. Sam? According to the World Prevention of Mental Health, also the same goes for all the organization. Uh, in, for every 40 seconds, one person or suicide and uh, that's crazy to know because just right from the time I was asked to answer the question it means someone has died <laughs> of suicide yeah that's incredibly high and uh, it makes matters worse when you realize that suicide is a preventable challenge it's a preventable challenge with the right awareness and with the right expertise and all ends up beyond that to mitigate this growing monster because it's really a growing monster i gone at those days when we think of uh, suicide as something that happens in the west or in the western world mm. uh, we have it around us and uh, it seems as if people are becoming bolder to actually take their own life and uh, unfortunately also uh, you just need to be on instagram and some specific instagram handles that i can't mention the names to read about the comments people give whenever there is a news about a suicidal attempt or a successful suicide. Just need to read through some of the comments. At times, by the time I get to like eight, nine, ten comments, so irritating that uh, I just switch over. I switch over to another and go straight away because the level of ignorance, the level of unawareness. Uh, you, I mean, I can give a couple of examples. Uh, for example, for me, saying, are you the only one in the country? That you are committing suicide. Ah, if there is a suicide attempt, let's say it, it, it is a past suicide or a suicide that wasn't successful, uh, you, hear, you read comments like, let him take his life now. If he won't go, let mm -hmm. him go now. Ah, sniper didn't work. Let him use this now. And it's just, I see it as a lack of knowledge, awareness, and ignorance, essentially, because. Those that are commenting that we did don't know also. And I think it's our responsibility, those of us that know. Let's do our part and that. That's why I commend no voice Africa for what they're doing. Kudos to you. Thank you very much. Dr. Neya, you work a lot in preventive um, um, you know, interventions and to ensure that you know it doesn't get to the stage of that. But from your experience, why do you think people commit suicide? If we're able to treat as many cases as we see, then we can prevent. Mm -hmm. Another thing we have come to realize is that there are people who are at risk of things like this, mm -hmm. at risk for suicide. And so when, in the course of um, preventive, we are able to identify people who are at risk. So there are some things that would make you at the risk of a suicide. And then for people like that, they should be closely monitored. There should be better interventions to help them. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. With your definition of why people, um, you know, commit suicide, uh, Catalyst, I'm going to ask, do, would you say, with all the things she's listed, you know, would you say it's a loss of hope and the feeling that there's nothing here for me anymore? As in, living is, dying is now more enticing than living. You know, summing all the things that she's listed. I mean, um, you know, um, I say that 90% of all suicide cases is uh, result from depression. And, and if you break down, uh, you know, the construct of depression is, you know, 
gloom, doom, um, you know, despondency, hopelessness, uh, sadness. Um, you know, you can't see any reason to live for. And, you know, the, going back to what Dr. Osazi said, you know, I, if, you, if you know the feeling, if you felt the feeling before, that's the only time that you can understand why the choice of death trumps the choice of, of life. Yeah. You know, and for people out there that don't understand it, all you just need to think about is this, right? Why will someone get to a point where they choose to take their own life rather than choose to fight to live? Have you, if you think about it, think about when you are killing a goat or a ram, mm -hmm. even a, a chicken, <laughs> how hard that chicken fights for. And even after you slit that chicken's throat, that chicken is still, still fighting. moving. Mm. So, you know, to take a human life is one of the most difficult things to do. Then to take your, your own, own life, life by yourself, it, it, it cannot be an easy decision. And for someone to make that decision, it means that, you know, they're not thinking right. Um, emotionally, they're not in the right place. Yeah psychologically they're not in the right place environmentally they don't feel like there's any support yeah there's any hope you know they don't feel like anybody loves me in, in fact quite a number of people have said that then they will know then they will feel my pain mm. you know because they don't feel like anyone around yes. them is supporting understanding what they're going you know is understanding what they're saying you know when they've spoken to you about how they feel you will tell them i beg Black people don't go through this. Ah, you are weak. Mm -hmm. You know, now, and, and so for them also, they found enough justification to end a life than to give life or to fight for life. Mm -hmm. So it is one of the most difficult decisions um, and it shouldn't be taken lightly at all. Now, speaking to, you know, environmental support, it is important for you know, family members, friends, to really be aware and observe. You know, we all need to go and understand what the symptoms are. Because, you know, it's closer than we know. They say one in five people in their lifetime will suffer from one, one form of mental, mental health, health or the yeah, other. Yes. So it may be you, it may be your sister, it may be your brother, it may be a member of your family, it may, it may be your best, or your best friend. And if you do not know what the symptoms are, then you don't know what to do. Now, you need to, you know, acquire the knowledge and, the, and understand the symptoms and begin to observe. Because someone that is suffering from a mental health issue will not check themselves into a hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, very unlikely. It's not like when you have malaria or when you have high blood pressure, it starts to feel uncomfortable. That person just wants to lock themselves up in a room, mm -hmm. in a dark room. They don't want to eat. They, you know, they just want to keep sleeping. Some of them can't sleep. They don't want to see anyone. They're not going to take your calls. So if you have a friend or a member of family that you keep calling and you observe that, you know what, well, that person no longer wants to pick up their phone. That person no longer wants to socialize. That person no longer wants to leave the room. That person is sleeping, you know, um, unusually. Then you need to begin to ask yourself, hmm. then listen to the kinds of words that they, you know, the kinds of things that they say, oh yeah, you know, uh, you don't love me. There's no reason for me to live anymore, you know, um, and, 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 and they start to speak hopeless words. Then you know that there's something wrong. At, at that point, you need to get help for them because they're not going to check themselves in. You need to get them to see the psychiatrist, the yeah. psychologist, the therapist that begins to even bundle uh, their issues. And a lot of times, right, you know, it's the thoughts that they've thought over time, yeah. over and over and over mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. that compounds it. You know, focus amplifies. And so you on the outside may be looking at it and, and saying that, but everybody else is going through that problem now, but you don't know how they've thought over it, they've regurgitated it, they've meditated on it, and so they've amplified the issue to such an extent that it's so overwhelming. They can't think of anything else or make any decisions. 
And it's important that I also say that every decision that we make is based on an emotion. Mm -hmm. And so if your emotions are negative, limiting, disempowering emotions, then your decisions will be negative, limiting, disempowering. Then your actions will be negative, limiting, disempowering. And then it will end up in outcomes that are negative, limiting, and disempowering. So just to add to what um, Coach has said, um, the, the decision to commit suicide, like uh, I think Dr. Sass also mentioned it, is, is not something that happens uh, immediately. It's not an action that somebody just thinks about on the spot. It always has to do with, you know, a lengthy uh, time on depression. You know, you say somebody who has suffered depression because even somebody who's suffered um, a level of depression, is a depression that has gone deep and over a long period of time. So there's no way somebody around a friend or a family, uh, a loved one, would not have noticed that this person has changed. We'll talk about those changes late, later. So, so the, the thought, suicidal thought, is actually a symptom of depression. Mm. So, so we need to know that we have responsibility towards those people. There's something that is called survivor guilt. That is the guilt that we ourselves feel when somebody we know commits suicide. Because mm -hmm. at times they commit this suicide, maybe not just to punish us, you know what I mean? Some of them, because they think they're a burden to you, they actually do it on your behalf. So imagine how it feels when you're thinking that somebody actually committed suicide on your, not my behalf, you know, on your behalf. That's, that's, that's terrible. That's a thought that many of us would even, that can even push us into mood disorder. Yeah. So that somebody is depressed can, along the line, actually make you, the press if the person goes to the extent of committing suicide yeah so we need to know that we have that responsibility because i i i know that sometimes people will see like some friends that had we're talking about uh, suicide um, prevention, prevention and it's like how does that concern me so it's not just about somebody who has committed suicide it's about the people around that person who has to live with that problem Probably. that this person i know actually committed suicide and i couldn't do anything about because that's when you start telling yourself oh was that why she was behaving somehow oh was this why you know and all that and these are things that we can we see but we play about it yeah you just see that there come on now nah, nah, is it you behaving like this so you could have been more so, so let's take it serious knowing that smooth swings in time can actually progress to somebody having suicidal thoughts and from a gender perspective, women are three times, you know, more likely to have to try suicide attempts than men. But men are four times more likely to succeed, mm -hmm. you know, to succeed in suicide attempts and actually commit suicide. Mm. So it's something that um, it's good that, you know, this world hell day, which is tomorrow, that this has been brought to the fore. And we can talk about it knowing that it's actually depression, anxiety, and all that actually leads, leads to, to suicide. suicide. People start, yeah. it's a mood disorder. People start thinking irrationally. So <laughs> if you're not having suicidal thoughts, don't even try to imagine. So don't, don't push it away when somebody is saying things like, I don't want to live anymore. Uh, Shabi, I will soon die. All of you will be, will be okay. Because we'll be yeah. we hear sometimes, I want to, exactly. So let's know that you can't imagine how that person is thinking. So don't try to understand it. What you should do is immediately get the person some help. Oh, fantastic. On, on that note, I want to ask you, Doc, um, what, age, what age range, what's the common age range, you know, of people that commit suicide? Is there any... Um, yeah. Um, uh, based on statistics, uh, the leading cause of death between the ages of 15 and 29 years yes. is suicide. And uh, there are certain age grades that have been notoriously known uh, for high rate of suicide. Since uh, elderly is above 65, especially when there's a loss of a loved one or companion or a loss of a major life investment. And uh, <laughs> so just to quickly add something, because uh, there's something I experienced in the last one, two years, I know, uh, I've seen or heard very common with Nigerians. Maybe because of a highly religious tendency, uh, so there are some signs of suicide. 
that I think uh, especially developed. Uh, for example, let me give you a classical statement. Uh, you will not see this most likely in textbooks or online that it's as a source from the Western world. For mm. example, when someone, there was a time uh, that was in, uh, like two different regions of love within the span of one week in Lagos. And there was a lady remember, yeah. that someone called me and talked about the, what do I think. I said, please, don't stay fire with that lady. And what happened? When the lady heard about it, two ladies that collapsed. Just like a joke, the lady mentioned that, you know, this building we are in now collapsed. Hmm. That's, a, that's a clear signal for societal change. You hear statements like from very religious people now. Uh, Rapper is going to have now. Even better, let's just end everything. Mm. This shame. That's a signal of societal tendency. So we say, I just want to eh? escape everything. I just want to escape everything. All statements like, I can't keep eating my own one now, my dear. Can't keep exactly. suffering this family mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. That's a signal. Don't leave that person alone. Because, like uh, the catalyst mentioned, most times, Suicidal tendencies in people have already hijacked their sense of reasoning yes. and judgment, and most likely they will not see the professional help themselves. It's mm. the people around them that are able to spot it at the right time and take them. Because for every successful society, according to statistics, there are about 20 programs. Mm. Dr. Dara, did you want to add to that? Well, he frankly said that it's common amongst the, the youth. So, um, and when you think that the youths are the ones who tend to be on social media, you know, they're the ones who are exposed with the barrage of uh, information or illusions we, we, we tend to see on social media, um, we would expect that, yes, definitely, that it will affect them, you know, a lot, a lot more. So it's, it's higher, it's higher in youth, within that age range of 15 to 29. And also that's because they're also the ones who are confronted with both emotional issues. It could be somebody who boyfriend left her or the girlfriend at that, at that age, that's right, the young adults now, you know, if, you, if you're over 21, you didn't talk about the younger, they're the ones who finish school and can't get a job. You know, so that is another issue. They're the ones who have maybe have a, a, a type of uh, maybe have dreamt to have to live in certain way and they're not meeting up financially maybe because they can't find that type of job especially in our <laughs> society now so relationship issues you know they have a lot of it um financial issues they are also you know most affected and uh, emotional so so the youth actually at who uh, are the targets at risk. most times, yes, they, they are at risk. Okay, while, while we're discussing, Dr. Maimuna walks in. Welcome, Dr. Maimuna, the celebrity <laughs> shrink. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> she is the MD, uh, CEO, founder, CFO. <laughs> all the old. All, all the, the old. All the old of Pinnacle Medical. <laughs> so we've been discussing, you know, suicide prevention, following on the theme for the World Mental Health Day 2019. Based on what Dr. Dorothy has said, these are like societal pressures, right? For the youth. Um, what are what 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 are some of the things that we can do to I mean, I don't think it's going to stop. I think it's going to or do you think it's going to stop? Or it's going to increase? Social how can we it's now how can even young people you know buffer themselves or even parents help? To ensure that the these people, the target, the people who die, 15 to 29, mostly from suicide, how can they be protected? How can they protect themselves from some of these things that put them at risk? The World Health Organization statistics that says half of all mental illnesses start before the age of 14. Yes. Mm. Mm. So if parents understand this, and that is why they say knowledge is not power, it's applied knowledge that is power. We have to equip ourselves. Parents have to go back to what we call intentional parenting in the sense that these challenges are not going to go away anytime soon. 
there are going to be more social media will increase in fact new things will come up every day so how should we parents equip ourselves in such a way that our children don't have that huge sense of entitlement that they are having right now there's no longer what we call delayed gratification children want it now they want they don't mm -hmm. care mm -hmm. how you want it so and children don't just get to learn these things now it's from what you write they don't come in with a plain mind what we write in in their mind the school the society everybody so what we deposit in them we have to change that narrative and by doing that going back to intentional parenting going back to the fact that spanking and beating is not the ultimate let's discuss mm -hmm. let's talk about it come up with superior arguments mm -hmm. yes. you are not saying that you are no longer a parent but you are letting it letting that child know that this is the wrong part. Let's create mental agility for our children. Mm -hmm. Let's create resilience. Mm -hmm. We because we didn't mm -hmm. eat three times a day, mm -hmm. or we ate without meat. Now we have money. <laughs> we now want to kill our children with excess meat, <laughs> or we want to make sure that we close down the slaughter to bring the cow to the house. <laughs> Everything the child wants, we are giving the child. But the workplace. The Ajegule child will be in the workplace. The um, Cambridge child will be in the workplace. The Mushin child will be in the workplace. People have grown agility and resilience. And they have street intelligence. You that pampered your child, that gave your child everything, will be in that workplace. How will that child thrive? We shouldn't only preach surviving. We should preach how we can thrive above all these trials. So the honors lies a lot on parents and parenting and getting it right because even children because of google and because of social media they easily go on the net and check for symptoms of what they are experiencing and it falls in oh i'm depressed then they go to the mother or the father or both they start casting and binding it's not our portion shut up you have a roof over your head you uh, you have clothes okay, you do you know how much i pay for your school fees we start you know going on and on we have to learn the skill of listening mm -hmm. non-judgmentally instead of listening to respond to our children mm -hmm. i'm an expert and i see children come to me every now and then so my own parenting style has changed i won't sit down so because i'm an expert also i know what will happen mm -hmm. i don't have to wait for a crisis now we sit down to dialogue i come up with superior argument when i know i'm losing the argument i will form as if i'm not too fine and uh, can we can do this topic another time then i'll go and equip myself <laughs> because the children they have they, yeah. they, they, they are 10 times ahead of um, you you, yeah. you should be 30 times ahead of them bring mm -hmm. life experiences mm -hmm. let your children also know that you you are failed <laughs> to cook because it's not one way not to parent a child. Though. If this is the way, and if you have two, three children, they are thinking different. 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 It's, it, it's different. so difficult to parent now that you will need parenting sure. seminar every now and then. <laughs> if it is coach, coach, how are you doing your girls? My daughter has reached this stage. Uh, Doctor Antipo, how? Uh, Dora, you know, say you be our senior. Your children are there on the ground. We never reach there. You know, you have to. Find ways and also monitor your children, sound them out. Don't compare. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are always failing. Your sister is always, well, well, you know, those things, words, you cannot retrieve them. You have to, you know, that, that's what we talk about is depositing. You have to deposit positive things in there. Even if you are angry, don't say your life will not be good. You don't say, may God forgive you. You know, you have to. <laughs> You have to just you find a way. You know, if you keep saying it, life is not good for the child, then it's not good for you because you're you're yeah. old age. I was going to say also that this is not this is not the the time where a child says, "You don't understand me, mommy. You don't understand me," and you now keep quiet. Yeah. Do something about it immediately. Yeah. You need to. If you hear that, oh, you don't understand me, or oh, nobody understands me in this house, that is serious. Make sure you leave everything, change everything, turn things around, and start understanding that child. Okay. He's sending you a message. It's not like when we were growing up. You dare even not tell your, your parents, you don't understand me. That's, I mean, nobody, they wouldn't even hear that. It's just, you don't have the guts. We don't have the liver. But this time, this time where in this social media age, if you ever hear 
you don't understand me or nobody understands me in this house. Nobody listens Please to Please drop me. everything around because they're going to go and look for somebody who oh, will understand them outside and will betide you if that person now wrongly understands them. Okay. You're, you're, it's finished. So I'm going to throw some... I want to discuss some of the myths that uh, um, associated the, the two with two sides. I'm going to throw some words at you, just really quick succession, and you can explain, right? So I'm going to start from the catalyst. Um, people who talk about su suicide won't really do it. As a as a myth, what do you think about that? So su suicide myth. Yeah, look. It is better that you are wrong than yeah. to realize that you didn't mm -hmm. listen and they did it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, once they commit suicide, you cannot take it back. Mm -hmm. That person is gone. And another thing that I wanted to say is, oftentimes, you know, people that commit suicide hear voices. Mm -hmm. They, and, you know, some people are like, what kind of voices are they hearing? Let me give you a typical example. You don't want to buy those pair of shoes. You know you don't have the money, you know, you can't afford it, but the last money in your pocket eh, is the one that you want to use. Some voice is telling you don't buy, because when you get home, well, a good day. Some voice is telling you buy. That same voice that is telling you to buy. Meanwhile, you know that you shouldn't buy, right? But you remember that uh -uh, you are going for a wedding, and that your friend that was always oppressing you. I just told you that she bought a pair of shoes. Then you want to keep up with the joke. That same voice tells you buy, and then you buy. If you can succumb to that kind of a voice, imagine the repetitive voice of it's time Somebody. to take your life. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody loves you. You know, there's no point staying alive. Your, your life is hopeless anyway. And that's the only voice that they keep hearing repetitively, right? You know, when you, you know, talk about that myth, that myth, once you hear it, please, as a parent, you know, as a friend, as a member of the family, do something about it. Okay, Dr. Naya. Um, the other, another myth I want us to look at is people who commit suicide are crazy. Or people who attempt to commit suicide are crazy. That's not correct. And the reason being that we know that, like, Kelly touch extensively talked about they are the point where they are hopeless they are the point where they feel this is the only way out so and sometimes you don't yes we know that if you're severely depressed you could have a piece of psychosis however for some people the main fact that they are depressed doesn't even have to be told to get they are depressed and you don't even see a need to go on i can't deal with you mm -hmm. then they begin to contemplate putting an end to this so i have we have seen in practice i have seen in practice where this individual is not psychotic, he's still in touch with reality. But you know what? I can't function. I can't go to work. I'm unable to concentrate of what use is this life. So that's very, that's incorrect. Actually, it can actually be, be treated. I mean, when their loved ones show that they care at and all that. And research has it that in, a, in about, it takes some, for some people, it happens in two days. They actually get corrected. But for most people, in in weeks in few weeks they're they're better i don't know maybe uh, dr muna can help us you know throw more light on on that but it is a myth they can actually be stopped mm. and many of them you know go through there's even the, the last minute thinking that they do before commit suicide there's something that is called the death mark mm. which is when people start calculating the number of years they still have to go based on their ancestral uh, uh, what they have seen, maybe their father, their grandfather, and all that, and then they are calculating and saying, okay, with this my issue, I have 20 more years. Going by, let's say, the people in our house live 60 years. Uh -huh. The person is 40. So the person has done that death man and say, okay, I have 20 years. Should I now commit this suicide within these 20 years, or should I wait? So there's some irrational thinking. They think, but it's irrational. So there's oh. some irrational thoughts exactly that, that, that goes through it and at that point before the person commits that suicide the person can be stopped so okay. it's a myth to say that if somebody wants to commit suicide 
like that nothing can stop that it. nothing can stop it. That's not true. Yeah. Something can can, Doctor can Sam, do a lot to stop it. If people who die by suicide are people who are we unwilling to seek help. Uh, like we said earlier on, I think we also talked about it extensively. Uh, someone that is already at that stage of having suicide ideation, uh, which I can mean the direct ideation or the indirect one, like the examples I gave, especially in religious time like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, a lot of people, regardless of their education level, they are not even aware of the mm -hmm. signals. Then again, that's all we call the risk factors. There are certain risk factors. Uh, it's not everybody. In fact, it's said that as of today, majority of people in the what we call the post-millennial generation or Generation Z, uh, which also a little bit falls into the age where we have the highest uh, rate of suicide, uh, 15 to 29 years, uh, the resilience uh, quotient is low as a result of many factors. Uh, so if I'm any of these, yes, uh, because <laughs> of uh, she mentioned delayed gratification, mm -hmm. uh, the technology age and social media yeah. age has uh, conditioned most people's brain in that generation mm -hmm. uh, to want to get something fast. That's one. Then two, uh, not to want to follow through process mm -hmm. to get the promise. They want to get the promise. Why not going through the process? All these have weakened the resilience. Then also the parenting factor. Because uh, we call it uh, uh, the boomerang effect of suffering. Mm. The boomerang effect of suffering. Because you suffered a lot growing up, you were denied certain things, you didn't wear sleep so you want to buy all the shoes in the world for your time. Uh, like they gave an example, you didn't eat a lot of meat, or you were denied meat a lot of meat. I want to close down the abattoir. Uh, uh, you struggle to school, so you don't want that child to struggle to school. I mean, it's so, so, so really in a society, a parent. Let me say this to our, our, our people joining us uh, via live chat now. Anytime you're a parent and you're watching now, if a child is meant to be repeating a class and you go straight to the proprietor or proprietress or the principal uh, because you have money or influence, you say no and they successfully help you to get that child to the next class or you even take the child away from the school so that he or she doesn't even re uh, repeat that class so that he can go to the next class in another school. What you have just done, you have denied that child the opportunity mm -hmm. of building his resilience. resilience yes. One of the best ways to build okay. resilience mm -hmm. is guided response to failure. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's why parenting, intentional parenting is very key. So resilience quotient is actually low in this age grade. So there are certain risk factors if such a person within that age grade, 15 to 29 years old, or Elderly after 65 years, exposed to this risk factor, sudden loss of a very close loved one, uh, a relationship breakdown that been part of the life of that person, a loss of a particular desire, it could be promotion, it could be academic, social, especially mm -hmm. academic presence mm -hmm. is a major issue. I wanted to add to it the other time, but I just decided because of time. Mm -hmm. Because academic pressure, I was a study I was involved in. Let me just quickly take this. In. Uh, so a private school, let me not mention the name, and uh, we got across a couple of private schools in Lagos. So we it's just a simple questionnaire among the school students. Uh, what are the top four of success? And by the time we collected, we collected over three thousand three thousand responses. And uh, we chose the top four. Academic pressure was number two. Academic pressure. And what a lot of parents have failed to realize is this. I'll be it out of love for the kids, but anytime you are trying to, one, compare a child that is doing well academically with a child that is not doing that well academically, you are collapsing the resilience, capacity, and the self esteem of that child. Secondly, anytime you are forcing a child to go in a lane that he feels he doesn't have the capacity for. Yes, mm -hmm. you can try to motivate, you can try to listen, but if at the end of listening, at the end of giving examples, at the end of presenting superior arguments, that child stays and sits at the end of this time and he falls that child. That child is, I'm handling one presently. I'm handling one presently. The child feels 
it doesn't have the capacity. In fact, the boy was crying in my office. He said, Dr. Sass, I struggle to read. I'm being careful so that I don't mention the course mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of confidentiality, because yeah. the medical science call. So I struggle in the class to sustain attention for what I've been saying. I struggle to read. It's as if something is closing down my life whenever I'm reading it. So I ask him, how long has this been? He said, right from secondary school. So at the end of the day, this child will feel a whole weight of academic pressure on him. And it depends on his capacity, residence capacity. If he's not doing well, if he's not thriving under that kind of pressure, it's a matter of time. They're pushing that child to depression. So, in summary, the truth is this. We cannot do things the same way as we've been doing in the olden days and expect a different result. But by Einstein said, that is vanity. Uh, we are all contributing to the high rate of depression mm -hmm. in society. Mm -hmm. Because someone that is already at that phase of suicidalization, it really does not have the capacity. But there's someone close to me, there's someone close to her that. Universe, I call it universe, we will have created an opportunity for the signal to present itself. But out of ignorance or unawareness, then pick it up. Because risk factors are signals, especially if you know the capacity of that person. Certain statements that I said jokingly mm. can be signal. Changing personality can be signal. Mm. Withdrawal isolation can be signal. Okay. And uh, someone that has been battling sadness or low mood all of a sudden, switches to happiness or someone that's been restless agitated all of a sudden it becomes calm it might not necessarily mean an improvement it might be a signal okay we're going to look at signals we're going to go into signals and you know because the main uh crux of the matter is you know focusing on prevention yes. you know preventing suicide so dr Memo, i'm going to throw this at you now um talking about suicide may give someone an idea to go and kill themselves. Is that a myth or fact? <laughs> it's a myth. <laughs> In fact, it's even stipulated that when you talk about it, it will help. It will make the person feel connected, feel listened to, feel um, you are showing empathy. It's not about the fact that when you don't talk about it, then the person yeah, you know, who shush can... about it, then no. Talking about it, in the emergency room, in well, um, set up places you can run through the um, warning signs of suicide without the person even knowing in fact it's even stated that you should ask the question directly do you have the thoughts of killing yourself don't even say have you been thinking um, have you had have you no do you think of killing yourself have you thought about how mm -hmm. what is your plan Mm -hmm. Have you documented mm -hmm. it down? Say, say it as it is. Don't embellish it. Because when you embellish it, the person may get the wrong signals or get it. You, it, it the interpretation to that individual may be different. So when you ask them, because suicide doesn't just occur. Only in few cases, but people all come with the idea, the plan, the plan, and of course before they execute it. Mm -hmm. So no, he said no, no. Suicide is preventable. And by talking about it, you are actually helping. In talking about suicide, is there a way people glamorize suicide and make it look, you know, attractive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only glamorizing, <laughs> even sensationalizing it, making it look like a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, people just people, people suicide these days is not it's not anything big. It's it's not uh, it's common. It's everywhere. Mm -mm. And that is why when, when we are talking about working together to prevent suicide, the media play a very important role. Mm. Reporting the cases of suicide must be done responsibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't generalize. Yeah, yeah. There's an increased rate of suicide. Everybody is dying in Nigeria. Is it an epidemic? <laughs> <laughs> because the moment you start seeing it, it people will start seeing it. Oh, the reticular activating system is moment you say you want to buy, uh, take a pink drink, you start seeing pink, pink everywhere. <laughs> so when people say, oh, people are dying of suicide now, you start seeing, hey, uh, that woman died in say, hey, is this suicide? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you start putting it in action. So, and, yes, and is that where the weather or coffee?
caste society mm -hmm. because the vulnerable people are already there. Mm. 15 to 19 is what they say, but we have people that are vulnerable, mm. and then the media will not write it. Uh, a 14 year old boy that lives in number five XYZ uh, so 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 Lagbaja Street went to a Yasikira shop and bought two bottles of sniper. Then in the night, after the parents uh, they went to so bed, he took one he empty to... one container. Then in the morning, the parents saw the two the bottles house. beside him and they you have said the house, you have said the Yasikira shop, you have said it is sniper. So this is a brand. Insecticides are among the things people use killing themselves. Mm -hmm. Now the way that's they're calling it sniper. It's, 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 even if it's not sniper, by. they will say sniper. And I'm so sad that that, that company. I don't know what they are going through right now. The truth is that you should just say 14 year old died. Must you say that's to do with sniper? Must you say where he bought it from? Mm -hmm. Must you say where he, he, he lives? It's uh, not the sniper that killed the person. Exactly. Yeah. It is that suicide house yeah. force that led the person to do that. Why are you telling us about sniper? Exactly. So in that in that case, do you want to say and the part of the which is great great um, comment? We've had something for the media responsibility. We're looking at yeah. you know people are responsible. We've talked about the parents. We've talked about the media. Mm -hmm. Now, banning sniper, for example, Dr. Dorothy, we're going to raise that point about it's not the sniper that killed the child, mm -hmm. right? Or banning the substance. Because tomorrow, if they say there's this drink that's killing people now, they say, okay, let's ban it, right? They take... Exactly, you know? <laughs> so, what is the role of, you know, our regulatory, you know, bodies or leadership yeah. in all these things? How are they addressing? Do you think that they're addressing the situation enough or they're just touching it at surface level. The, 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 the truth, Omar, is that depression, because that's what eventually leads to suicidal thoughts and suicide. Depression is a mental health challenge. And because it's a health challenge, what the regulators or what the government needs to do is to ensure that for people who, um, who have these challenges have somewhere to go. Mm. I really don't think it has anything to do with sniper because before they said sensationalizing sniper, people were using sniper for whatever sniper is meant to be used for. So the most important thing is that the government creates avenue. We have enough uh, psychiatrists, we have enough uh, psychotherapists. You know, we have people that they can go to when this happens. That's what people need. That's what we should be worried about. If somebody We've, been, we've talked about the responsibility of the loved one. So, if somebody now realizes, if I realize that my loved one needs help, where will I go to? Mm -hmm. Can I take them to um, the, the, the therapist? And is the therapist affordable? That's when you now start talking about ability to pay. That's where healthcare financing now comes in. Can we, can they actually pay? Because you have an existing one, but the problem is people don't have the means to get to them because it's, it's a specialty. So government needs to look at making it, uh, you know, available. They need to make it available, both the medication. So people who need to take medication will take medication. Because, yes, you can talk to your loved ones. But when you finish talking to the person, what does that? that cure it? You know, does that really cure it? If the person needs medication, the person needs therapy, the person has to go to therapy. And it's not one session, not just, they will go for sessions that cost money. So... Our, our, our government needs to look at the health system and make sure that from the primary level, the, the referral system works, people can actually have access to those. Because, I, you know, sometimes people will call me, oh, the authority, your mental health. This, this. If people actually know what to do, they will just go through the system, go yeah. from the primary provider, Ooh. go to the secondary, and be able to get to the therapist. And, but it has to be paid for. Mm. So we need affordable health care. That's the simple Affordable yeah. health care. So with mental, health health mental health should be included in um, the, the essential, you know, the basic health care. Mm. It, should be, it should be basic. Mm. It's not something that only uh, rich people can afford. It's not something that somebody sets up some fine drug uh, rehabilitation center and the only people who have money can... can it's go. not something that... Look at our schools. How many, how many schools have psychologists? I remember when I was in Queen's College, we had a, a psychologist. 
you know but how many schools now maintain psychologists so that's it we need affordable health care and mental health should be inclusive fantastic yes i bet to differ a bit because i've done an extensive research on this issue of suicide mm -hmm. an evidence-based practice one of which has said that control of lethal weapons things that people use for suicide has been shown to be effective however the problem in nigeria is that if you don't just do that and go to sleep mm -hmm. there are other aspects so if we are saying so we want in, to make in addition health, yes so <laughs> if so if you want to make mental health accessible to them mm -hmm. we would not say because we have identified that this is the fastest and the cheapest way people want to end their life mm -hmm. i remember when people were going down the third mainland bridge they decided to make barricades higher yeah. over a period decided to keep um thinking men there mm -hmm. for an extent you know after a while that fizzled away the, the usual things in nigeria yeah. and then the issue of um, using pesticide people. yes it's a good step but that's not enough dr Mimuna said something you know and that just brought to my mind um, i think the theme for last year's world mental health Day, the focus on the youth building mm -hmm. resilience yeah how do we build resilience beyond all this yes there's a function of family members the parents but we need to begin to go to schools. We're not yes. doing that in this mm -hmm. country. We need to go to school. We need to create awareness. We need to let people, the young, these people, this age bracket, understand that, you know what, it's not as easy as you think. We need to begin to drill you early. It's part of the process. So if we decide that as a country, we want to serve up an approach, this angle, this angle, this angle, mm -hmm. this angle, while you are making building capacity, we do not have enough psychiatry building capacity at this level, at this level, you're also saying, you know what, let's make these services affordable, available, in addition, okay, what are these measures? Can we address this? Can we tackle this? Quickly, I want to go back to something, who was, I, I think it was Dorothy, who also said something, remember when she was talking about the um, impact of suicide? Mm. And to add to what Dr. Mimuna said, that's the part we don't talk about. God forbid, she dies by suicide. We do not know the effect it has on it. At least myself and her. Studies have shown that in a family setting, if someone dies of suicide, mm -hmm. six people, at least six people are affected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That brings me back to what are the risks for suicide. If in family B, there's a suicide, every member of the family is at a risk of yes. suicide. Yeah. Because over time, and that brings us to the media, which Memona said, you do not, we do, we're not interested in developed countries, they may say, and even this thing you say committed suicide, you don't accept it. Mm -hmm. You have moved past that and died by suicide because you feel that you are even stigmatizing this person yeah. that has to take his life. So you don't accept that you don't even talk about committed. It's like okay, it's like okay, you're still seeing it as a crime. We are still criminalizing it. You committed an offense, mm -hmm. so you committed suicide. You know, so you can imagine that when this person has attempted suicide and then the society reports it like that, even without reporting, the impact family members. I read a study that said as much as one thirty-five people are affected by every suicide. Now we have six in the family. So just spread okay. out from six to so how many colleagues. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you can just count how many people. And yet the media isn't paying attention. How is this next person getting this news? Mm -hmm. And suddenly it feels, oh I know her. Oh, you know, you have an impact on it. So it's like a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. No spread it is. Wide which is why is also an, a way of addressing and preventing suicide. And we begin to do it more responsibly. Mm -hmm. and so you know what? We are careful. Not knowing as many, so many other people will mm -hmm. be affected. I may not even talk about it. As Mimuna also said, you still have the people who just, they have, they feel gingered. Okay, <laughs> Miss Day has done it. You know, yes. Mm -hmm. There was a time it was happening. And everything was, uh -uh. is this the latest in Lagos? You, you, you. Another person just feels, if they have attempted it, I can do it. We could also talk that. Thank you very much. Um, to add to that, there was, I think it was last year, there was a, a famous uh, person in the UK who committed suicide. If you see her Instagram, she was always so bubbly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like she had the boyfriend she loved, she was just happy, and she killed, you know, she, she, she died. And when she died uh, by suicide, um, the boyfriend would on Instagram say, oh, I can't believe you'll be quoting on, you know, you left me. And then I want to be, and people, if you, people are just people so, you know, the empathy, yes. 
like oh look at this one attention seeker this da 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 and guess what the he guy committed yeah, kill himself that's by suicide mm-hmm. just maybe what three four days after her funeral mm-hmm. he died so now let's talk about because this is about prevention mm-hmm. let's talk about how can you help somebody close to you what are how do you read the signs what are the actions you should take I'm going to tell you catalyst because we're looking at how to prevent, how to help. We, you know, you know the signs, you know what they should do. But the normal person who is just dead, you know, what are the things they should do for people who they know, friends, family members, and all and all that. I mean, I always go back to this. Uh, you know that people need to take responsibility, responsibility for their lifestyles. <clears throat> responsibilities for the things that they do. So I often, you know, say boost your dose of dopamine. Mm. Because if you have a healthy dose of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and everything, right, um, it will help a lot. So as family members, you know, um, are you ensuring that you eat food that are rich in tyrosine? Are you ensuring that, you know, you give them massage. Are you ensuring that you know collectively you you exercise? Are you ensuring that you know early in the morning you go for early morning walk and, and get your daily dose of vitamin D? Are you ensuring you know that you know you spice up your meal? Are you ensuring that you guys sit on a daily basis to have a at least one meal, a family meal? And when you have that family meal, you can talk about your real life issues. Mm-hmm. Are you ensuring that, you know, you are sharing your vulnerabilities and your own challenges? You know, because a lot of people hide their own challenges. Especially people in leadership. When mm-hmm. we, people, religious leaders. You know, <laughs> leaders in, in, the, in the office, parents. Um, people in positions of authority, you hide your own challenges, such that when that person in real time f- fails, they think that really and truly is the end of the world, because it seems like they're the only ones that have failed. When people begin to share their own failure stories, and we all have it, when people begin to share their own challenges, when people begin to share their vulnerabilities, when people are truthful, about their real life challenges, right? Then people will realize, really, really, it's not just me. You know? And so it is important for you to understand the critical lifestyle changes that you need. Music, the kinds of music that you're listening to. You know, and <laughs> the millennials, you know, it's technology and isolation from relationships. That's why one of the reasons why a lot of them are prone to, you know, mental health issues. 24-7, you're on your phone, you're on your iPad, you're in isolation, mm-hmm. you're watching series 24-7, mm-hmm. and you fail to have, you know, relationships with people. I mean, there is a way that God designed it that we need one another, and no man is an island. And so you find that, you know, you just go to the office, you do your job, you leave the office, you're not interacting, you're not engaging, you don't want to interact with anyone, you just want to be playing games on your phone, you know, you get home, you just want to be watching TV, you, you know, you just want to stay in your room, you know. So a lot, of, a lot of these things, right, are lifestyle issues that we need to understand what we need to do. There are critical steps that you need to take. Um, lifestyle adjustments you need to make, behaviors you need to change, and it starts from friendship, it starts from parenting. If the statistic is pointing to the fact that, you know what, you know, the youth are taking their life, then the question that we have to, to ask ourselves is, what are the parents doing wrong? And parents need to begin to take responsibility, to begin to change the way that they relate to their children. Dr. Dorothy, made a point. When your child begins to say, you don't understand me, 
when your child begins to say that, you know what, um, mommy, you are too hard on me. That's the time that I find that parents, you know, react instead of listen and respond. Stop reacting as parents. Listen. Ask yourself, you know, what can I do differently? So one of the conversations that I had with, you know, um, some parents was this. Do you know that when you look at your child's friends and you say, can't you be like this child and be no, no, no. first in school? No, no. You don't know that child's extracurricular activity. You don't know whether that child takes drugs. You don't know whether that child is, mm -hmm. you know, promiscuous. You don't know what that child does. So what you're saying to your child is, I want you to be like that other child. Now, you think that <clears throat> the only message that you're sending is, I want you to be first in class. Uh -uh. But you're already saying to that child, you know what, everything that that child does, I you want you to be. Copy. <laughs> you have sent a wrong signal. And then you have positioned your child. The next thing is, this matter of resilience, we cannot overemphasize it. It is very, very critical that you build your child's emotional resilience and stability. Mm. Deny them certain things, even if you can afford it. You know, let them understand the fact that you cannot have everything that you want. Mm -hmm. That's not how life is. Also, don't overcompensate as a parent. Now, a lot of parents are no longer available. They are absentee parents, um, coupled with the fact that they couldn't have it, and so they want to live their life through their children. Mm. But those children feel pressure. They have their lives to live, and so you need to ask them, what exactly do you want to do? What exact, who exactly do you want to be? You know, what exactly are you passionate about? And support them to live their dreams. There's so many practical things. No, that you know um, we can do as parents as friends you know as family members and even we you know um that that you know we're having our own challenges there's so many practical things that we can do you know it's important for us to to, to accept that we have power over it by changing our lifestyle and as we change our lifestyle we boost our growth of dopamine and oxytocin serotonin and endorphin you know, we can limit, you know, the prevalence. Okay. Thank you. Um, Dr. Dr. Menmuna, I want to ask you, what are some, it's like a first age, there was a time with the, the um, theme was about first age, you know, for mental health, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, you know, like boxes you just need to tick when you know as a loved one or friend or something that I'm seeing this sign so, what are some of the things like take this person here, do this, do that? What are some like in quick suggestions, like those tips that you can say, let do that for this person? No, um, when we talk about first aid, we, we are talking about the fact that you don't want that person to get to a crisis position. Yes. So you want to quickly nip it in the bud. Yes. So and in 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 the warning signs of suicide, there are, there's a mnemonic to it. And I think if we quickly tick those ones you know that one word that every relative friend colleague should know is what has changed mm. this change you should look watch out for because you've known this individual for some time and then you now notice yeah. that there's a change mm -hmm. and this is why this person is looking like this so the suicide warning signs which is very categorical this classified with a beautiful mnemonic is, is part one i s part p a t h warm w a r m I is the ideation, you know, and that ideation can come with, if I die now, nobody will care about mm -hmm. me, and if I just die now, people will even be happy, safe, you know, those things, so you have to look at that quickly, and say, okay, this person, or do you want this bag, you know, this person ordinarily will not give you this bag, and you like it, and you can have it, you know, they start sharing things, they start writing, you know, <laughs> the idea there is substance abuse, whether you are using before, or you didn't even use that, at all but now you are not using or you are using excessively mm -hmm. so alcohol intake marijuana all that you have to also check that tick that box the p there is purposelessness mm -hmm. they just feel as if they don't have any i don't have, my use in this house is not valid there's nothing for me in this office so i'm just i feel useless 
you, you just have a sense of purpose. Become a protective they, you, couch. Uh, yes. Or, you know, they just cover the black, themselves. Blanket, you know, that out. kind of a thing. And the aid there is anger. For any little thing, they just blow it out of proportion. Mm -hmm. They can even get to a range. Why is that person behaving that way mm -hmm. that the person is behaving? The thing here is trapped. The person feeling trapped. Feeling everything is an effort. Feeling that there's nothing they can really do. And the behavior is hopelessness. So purposelessness, hopelessness. They feel hopeless, they feel worthless, they feel nothing mm -hmm. is good in life. This is pink. Uh, are you sure? In fact, I'm just tired. Let's go for a party. I'm not interested. But this was the I know one bad kind of person before. Mm -hmm. The W there is withdrawal. And you know that this person is a social person. All of a sudden, he's not even communicating. If he's in a meeting, he's not talking. At home, he's not coming mm -hmm. for the round table meal. He's just withdrawn and maybe room bound mm -hmm. or office bound. Then the A there is anxiety. They feel anxious. They even feel agitated. They feel restless and all that. The, are wow. there is recklessness, they go into risky behavior, they don't they don't they drive speedily, they don't care, they are reckless about their lives, and of course the MDA is mood changing, mm -hmm. which is unhappiness, low mood, and all. So if you see all this and you quickly want to help this person get around this, and no, this is what it is. You see, I'm very good with me money. I that is and I think that's the only way uh, if we get that, it's very easy to put it. You see, I see you. The answer is identify the problem. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem this person is dealing with? By the time you take all these warning signs, when you identify it, the CDS connect with this individual. Whether it's a child, whether it's a brother, whether it's a colleague at work, connect with that individual. And the you there is understanding the way forward. Now you have identified the problem. You have connected with this individual. What are you doing about no. it? You listen to the person not judgmentally. You tell the person for the past three years you've been working together that you've been like this, very good, very this, very that. But in the last one week and your last two weeks, I noticed this, this, this. You want to talk about it? I'm here to listen. I may not be a professional. You can Google a therapist to talk to. I can help you book an appointment. You know, that kind of a thing. Way forward. When you listen, when you show empathy, when the person feels connected, when the person feels supported. And of course, you can't run around and be looking for psychiatrists. It's one for one million Nigerians. Nigerians. Mm. How many psychologists do we have? It's also there's a huge deficit. How many hospitals do we even have? Facilities that you mm. say you want to take people to. So all that we have, you, the trusted family member, can do your own in your own little corner. Because when you do that, the first aid, it's like the way you just a wound and you see the person bleeding, mm -hmm. and the person may mm -hmm. never know he or she is bleeding. Like, ah, oh, you are bleeding. Come on, we have a first aid box here and all that. Mental illness doesn't present mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Is that change you see in that individual for you to now say there's something that has happened over time? Because when we think the way we act and the way we behave, it's the same person at home, the same person in the office, the same person in the salon, the same person in this hotel. You can't take it away from that. So once you know all that and you're able to connect and help that individual, if you have the chance, book the appointment, go with the person. Mm -hmm. Because the, the highest risk for completed suicide is a previous suicide. Mm. So if somebody has ever Friday. attempted um, um, suicide before, to so complete it is, is easier because uh, because when they when they do that and you assess, sometimes they they are telling you I'm I'm, 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 I'm not happy in my life. I, I don't want to be alive. So those are the things that can give you those signals to say okay this person needs help. Not like trivializing the person's challenges and say look. Are you the only one that uh, that you are feeling? No, if you hear all our own stories, eh, your own is small. It's not your story we are talking about. It's this person's story. Don't trivialize. It can make the person feel as if he or she doesn't have to problem. Thank you very much. That was quite helpful. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Osas, how can a suicidal person seek and find help? Dr. Uh, Mimuna has already, you know, alluded to... Uh, you know, just pointed out the fact that really we have one to one, one to a million, one million. in Nigeria, which is a scary thought, you know. But how can, in the midst of this scarcity, how can someone who's suicidal, who feels really depressed, because there's some people who actually know that they're struggling and they come to ask on social media, for example, mm -hmm. even I get a lot of, you know, DMs or messages and they say, I need help. How can they find help? All right. Uh, just quickly to 
add something that is crucial to the line of discussion. Uh, once you spot a signal or suicide, or someone is exposed to what we can call a severe risk factor for suicide, inclusive of all the ones we've mentioned, please don't leave such a person alone. Because uh, at that point of being alone, they can become very, very prone. They can have time and space to plan out because society requires planning. All right, I haven't said that. Let me come back to seeking help. Where we can find help. help. Yeah. All right, so are, are we talk about uh, the therapeutic help and the preventive help. For the therapeutic help, it's unfortunate that uh, we have a lot of uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, it takes time to build that back. Uh, psychiatrists, one in one million, that's terribly, terribly low. Then psychologists, and unfortunately also, uh, psychologists that have the competence among the psychologists that are already low, mm. very low. Like I was just sharing with Dr. Memona, uh, a cousin of mine who is also my client, uh, that left a university, a federal university, named Witted, a uh, popular university in Nigeria, and uh, at the second year, studying psychology, went to US, for two years he didn't come back, so he was in his final year, came back for a program, and his friends decided to hang out with him, and they were just discussing, that's his friends and psychologists in that federal university, in their fourth year here, he... He's in second year. No, he's in third year in US, okay. because he, he, he lost one oh, year, yeah. mm -hmm. and... Uh, they were saying and discussing certain things that they were thought, and the guy felt he felt strange about all those things. So he felt maybe they were not teaching them well over there. So he got back to the US and asked his lecturer. His lecturer was not hearing everything. He said, This is 1979 curriculum. Oh my God. And Dr. Mimina, we attest to this. Uh, uh, so it's a major issue. So how we want to say we have a serious debt of. Competent professional, not even just the professional. However, there are a couple of things we can all do. Uh, if you are battling suicidal thought or you are even depressed, first thing that you must realize is this: is treatable. Is treatable. There's nothing like hope is lost or this is the end of the road. It's totally treatable by seeking help. Second thing is this: for supporters or that's why we say in the triangle management of mental health issues, psychiatry, psychotherapy, and social support, they are all equally important because social support, as simple as it may sound, very hugely important because most likely, most likely, like we have all mentioned, depression, suicide, suicide ideation rather, is a journey, and they will have been given signals. And the one I'd like to add to it, universe, we always create an opportunity for a loved one to spot it. But yes, yeah, mm -hmm. universe is love. Okay. So society, uh, universe, we always create an opportunity for a loved one to spot it. For ignorance and unawareness, we make us miss it. So social support, social circle is very key to it. Then thirdly, there will be always someone to reach out to in your network don't accept that it's not treatable once you know and realize that it's treatable there will be always be someone that you can reach out to however if there's no so body just go to any hospital and speak to a doctor that you need a referral to a mental health profession just go to any hospital and see a doctor please be careful i will say this with all due respect to religious leaders be careful with seeking help from religious leaders there are some of them that are very good they are well aware about mental health, but there are a lot of them that are ignorant of mental health. And I, I say this with all due respect. Uh, I've seen a lot of cases. You say religion, from. both orthodox and orthodox, <laughs> because not so religious, they <laughs> Yes, religious leaders, generally. 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 Uh, generally. Uh, because there is too much of labeling going on in the religious circle. Uh, I don't even want to use the word stigmatization. That one we have known that for long, but labeling. Uh, so, please. Just go to a hospital, go to the doctor, and dealing with this, at least the doctor most likely will be confidential, because mm -hmm. confidentiality is the key thing. 
and ask him to restore the remains that the journey will start from there then uh there are also national response lines and state response lines society mm -hmm. response lines uh that everybody should have unfortunately i don't have the line there yes if i have it on my phone maybe in lagos state but there is, there is a national with, one you can there is national with, line yeah. Then uh, there are a lot of uh, we, we, we will groups. Put it on our yeah, yeah, there are a lot of groups that are available online now. Mm -hmm. So uh, the easiest way to do this, just Google suicide response line in Lagos. Google suicide response line in Nigeria. You most likely be able to reach out to someone. Mm -hmm. Just reach out. Know that it's treatable. Mm -hmm. I will quickly move to the preventable or uh, the preventive uh, help that you can go for as uh, an individual dealing with depression. Uh, you must learn to also build your emotional resilience. Uh, the catalyst has talked about building your dose of those. Uh, there's a mnemonic I developed uh, in the last three months that I've tested. And so what happened was that uh, I was driving on Admiralty Way and uh, in the dark, and the driver and the police officers, Nigeria police officers, uh, asked me to park. You know, when it's in the dark and they ask you to park, the next statement is predictable. In a light. And after I escaped through that uh, scenario, something clicked in me that can develop this as a same way of addressing emotional issues. When your emotions are boiling, you can also tell the emotions to pass. When you tell the emotions to pass, your inner light or resilience will come on. Mm -hmm. We turn on. And what is PARK? P A R K. P. Learn to always pause your emotions. See, any situation you are passing through in life, if you're watching me now, any situation you are passing through in life, the signal from that situation will first get to your emotional brain before it gets to your thinking brain. So what it means is that your emotions, a lot of emotions will be evoked in you. And based on how you have been programmed to undo that kind of emotion, if care is not taken, you will act based on that emotion. So learn to pause, don't hurt, regardless of the heat, wherever it's coming. Uh, a public shame, because it's one of the psychosocial risk factors. A huge public shame. Just pause, don't even decide because you will give time for your thinking brain to catch up with that decision mm -hmm. and with your thinking brain catching up you will be able to weigh the risk and benefit the pros and cons then also when we say pause you are pausing to know the purpose of the emotions you are facing but i will not go deep into that that one requires a lot of explanation let me quickly go to the second one using park mode hey affirm your strength anytime we are facing a situation that is challenging in our life it could be an overwhelming demand or pressure the tendency is there for you to start seeing the negatives, what you lack, yes. what is not enough, mm -hmm. why it cannot work. Mm -hmm. And it's not your fault. The society is wired that way. That's why negativity says faster. That's why you most likely your attention will be driven towards if you have two cars. If your car is giving you the problem, the most problem, your attention will be more towards that car. So that's why psychologists also tell us that 70% of our general thoughts are negative. So Learn to affirm your strength. Your challenges are throwing your shortcomings to you. What you lack, what is not enough, what cannot work, why it cannot work. You must take up the responsibility of affirming what can work, what I have, what can go right. And it doesn't mean you do it once. You repeatedly do it to yourself till your reticular activating system embraces it and amygdala soaks that in. And it's the reality of your brain. It's the battle of who does it more, who wants it more. Whether your challenge is throwing negativity to you or you yourself throwing positivity to yourself. It's all about who wants it more. The how is reframing. The truth is that 70% of our mm -hmm. general thoughts are negative. Mm -hmm. uh, the society, all what we are exposed to, our environment, our education, our, ex our experience and exposure. If care is not taken, you will see more of negative because wherever you focus on expands, due to your reticular activity system. So learn to reframe your thoughts. And there are a couple of statements that predispose people to hopelessness easily. I call them hypnotic language, like we say in NLP. Uh, for example, uh, you just have a conversation with someone and repeatedly it's going through your mind, oh, I goofed. I committed a grammatical blunder. That's a self-sabotaging thought. The care is not taken. Your confidence keeps going down. You're weakening your resilience. Why don't you reframe it? Oh, it's just one of conversations. I have another chance to get better. Or, for example, you're saying to yourself, this is the end of the road. I like to put it this way. Whenever something in your present and future is showing you 
a failure or a shortcoming. Go back into your past to identify a strength, a success, and catch, capture the experience and use it to face that present and future. It helps in reframing. Reframing your thoughts, your words, your perception is very key. And last one is keep moving. Whatever the emotion wants to stop you from doing, keep moving in that direction of what you want to achieve. Because what the challenges are doing is to stop you from achieving what can even help you to escape from their hand. So when you learn to pack your emotions, in our life we come up. Thank you very much. That's, that's amazing. Great one. Thank you. Um, quickly, we're going to round up now. Um, but I just want to, Dr. Dorothy, you are, you know, in the health uh, management uh, industry. And they've said, um, really, we, uh, we don't even have them, right? I mean, one to one million is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So how, in, 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 in your industry, right, in that, in that now you've seen a situation where people are now even making plans for the adding, including mental health, in the packages that people get. And then what are where people are not able to provide, even afford these things? What are some things, some plans that you are privy to that are helping people access um, mm -hmm. more mental health care? Mm -hmm. so, so now, mental health, um, access to mental health is uh, one that is regarded as, you know, essential health. You know, care. So even for the NHIS, that's a, the NHIS yeah. benefit plan you have mental health covered there. You have mm -hmm. access to psychiatrists, yes. Um, you have also the treatment covered. Um, I think the problem is with people taking responsibility of their health and actually investing. I may be saying, you know, it depends on the opportunity, what, what, you, what you prioritize. You see somebody carrying uh, an iPhone, probably that's worth hundreds of thousands and the person doesn't have health insurance. So, so <laughs> that's true. Let's not have health insurance. Don't have the culture. So, if, if Nigerians would prepare, let me not go into that because we don't have the half yes. time. But the, the thing is that we have uh, psychiatric care, we have um, even behavioral, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Behavioral change management. You know, So, it's all there in the package, whether it's public or private. But people, and the public one is as cheap as 15,000 naira per person. But yeah. So even if you if you want to invest on that just for the mental health package, you can actually buy it and leave it only where you need access to a psychiatrist. And so you now take that route, like just like uh, Dr. Sad says, you go to the doctor, they refer you, and all that. You be able to see a psychiatrist. And this is available in all. Um, this is affordable. NHIS Park is everywhere. Everywhere. And it's fifteen thousand. And you how can, can people buy access it? Some people don't know. How can they get this NHIS? That's package? why you have HMOs. Mm -hmm. Your HMOs work with um, NHIS. So you can buy it through your HMO. You can, the, the NHIS is a, a regulatory uh, body. But from the HMOs, you can buy. If you don't want that one, you can buy the private plan for the HMOs. Okay. So there's the health insurance that covers it. So you can do that. So we need that. to as make low that as little, 15, as low as 15,000 naira. Go to Novo Health so and, that's, and get that's that. That's the cheapest. That's what the government has brought and is, a, is affordable and is available. Okay. So please go get that. Now, uh, Dr. Naya, final words, final words, very you know, briefly now, what you want to say to people watching, people here, um, about you know, suicide prevention. You're very much into the preventive measures. So what, and treatment and all those things. What are some... Last word on, on this. Every time we talk about suicide, for me, it still brings us back to mental wellness. And really, what is mental wellness? When mental wellness starts with self care, mental wellness starts with self awareness. If you don't have self awareness, self awareness is when you know there is a change. Oh. I used to sleep eight hours. Now I barely sleep five hours. Mm -hmm. That's a change. Some people still do not know what self-awareness is. Self-awareness will encourage you to self-care. And then with self-care, you will have mental wellness. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. That's so good. And you can follow uh, Dr. Neya to get some of these self-care uh, and wellness uh, tips. How can they follow you to get those? On Instagram, Naya Ndupu, and on Twitter, Dr. Naya Ndupu, as in Naya, N-A-Y-A-N-D-U-P-U. 
So okay. thank you. Okay, Catalyst, what are some of your, you know, one last word for people who are here on prevention and suicide prevention? I mean, it's important that you know that, you know, um, your life is yours. And <laughs> you, you only have one life to live. Um, never give up. Uh, keep on keeping up. Mm -hmm. um, life is sweet. You know, <laughs> everyone has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at everyone the end of the purpose. day, you know, God is going to ask you, what did you achieve with the time that I gave you here? So learn to, you know, live your best life and, and, and do the best that you can do. Uh, also important that, you know, as a lifestyle, you, you have a therapist, you have a psychologist, you have a life coach that helps you look at your life. You know, don't wait till when you have a problem. Mm. Oftentimes, by the time you design your life and you take control of your life, right, um, you know, you'll be doing the right things, you'll be having the right perceptions, You'll be thinking right. You'll be living by the right ideologies and beliefs and values. Um, you'll be living your own life. Another thing is, you know, people compare themselves a lot to other people. And, um, you know, uh, people want to live other people's right. lives. So you think that the grass is greener on the other side. But guess what? You know, <laughs> it, not, it never happens that way. Live your life. Live your best life. Take control of your life and get support. Uh, get psychological support, emotional support, relational support, environmental support, professional support. So keep support. a social set network. Yeah. You know, just get support and get help. And, you know, you can find me on social media, simply at Lanrio Lushola, no H in it. Okay. I'm going to come back to you to share your um, uh, social media handles and one last word. But I want to meet Awa. Awa yeah. is, you're young. We've talked about you know, the suicide, uh, the most common people who die mostly by suicide, it's the leading cause of death for 15 to 29, age 15 to 29. And you fall in, in, in that, you know, age range. Um, and also, you, are, you do a lot of mental health uh, work. So what are your thoughts on everything that we've said and some of the preventive measures that we can look at for young people? Um, so I think... Discussion has already been very, very rich, you know, from prevention to challenges Can't hear you. to first aid. <laughs> you know, so I think it has already been very rich. Um, so if I'm adding to it, it would just be a bit of maybe reinforcement and, you know, repetition. But I will say that prevention is really key, you know, because I don't think as a country we have the capacity. Um, whether economically, financially, in terms of manpower, to handle response. The population is way too much, and there's a whole, there's a huge deficit that we're trying to close. And we're not going to close it in 10 years, maybe not even 20. Not look, if you look at current political willpower, it can't even happen in 30 years. So it's very important that we begin to shift a lot of our attention to prevention. And when we look at prevention, and one of the things that I like to advocate for is systemic change. Because we can all gather, which is, I mean, we can all do our little bit, which is really impactful, which is nice. But if the system stays the way it is, then we're always going to be just sitting against the ceiling, you know. So we're looking at systemic change in terms of policy and reforms and, you know, the law. You know, if you're looking at Nigeria in all our greatness and our last mental health law really was in 1958, we're still running with lunacy act, then there's a problem. You know, how do we begin to talk about community-based mental health care? Because we can talk about insurance and HMOs, but let's be very honest, it's really for the privileged. What are you going to tell the people within the communities who don't even have access to this knowledge in the first place? So it's always very important that when we have community-based health insurance, we have community-based health insurance. It's not for the rich. It's not for the rich. But the people that we need to afford don't drag into the roots. Yeah, so, so we, we really need it. to push it into deep, deeper into the community because they don't even know why they should take it. They should mm -hmm. use you know, it. So it's, it's, it's very, very Enlighten important. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, I think for me, that's where it is. It's in policy. But beyond just policy, it's also seen policy through to being, you know, being implemented. And that's why strategy frameworks are so important. And it's a very inclusive conversation. How do we use education? You know, like 
countries all over the world are beginning to introduce mental health into their curriculum. Into their curriculum yes. It's for a reason, you know. Um, we're talking about um, other ways of integrating mental health into intersectional solutions, whether it's through media, arts, you know, sports. Sports for change is now so common all over the world. So systemic change, preventative intersectional solutions, for me, is big in terms of how we talk about mental health. Amazing. Thank you, Awa. Thank I would have much. wanted how to say more. Like yeah, the challenges. A special appearance. <laughs> yes, some so of the challenges people are looking at for the young people. Talking yeah. And mm. it's like, it, somebody might feel, maybe because we, we, we are professionally qualified to talk about it. How I want you to tell for the people who are here, for people who are watching, you are qualified to talk about better health. Can you just give us, I know we don't have time, just a little bit about your journey to, to where you are. So just to put it in very, not to go into too many stories. So how we say it now is, I'm an expert by experience, you know. So uh, <laughs> of course I live with a mental health condition, and I have had two near suicide attempts myself. So I understand this from the other side, as you know, the service user or the person who is being referred to, whether it's in media or conversations like this, and it is seen sort of. You know the entire angle you know the entire journey of going from being this person who was thriving and you know living life to going to this point where there was a breakdown to coming out of it understanding the challenges are, are around it that has given me sort of maybe a unique or kind of a different perspective on how i look at mental health as somebody who has been there so for me, it's always about advocating for conversations exactly. and also ensuring that with every step that we take, that we are not excluding the people who actually live with mental health condi exactly. and conditions in the conversation. Because I think a lot of times it's very easy for us to get to a place where we think we know what people need. Mm -hmm. And it's such an arrogant thing to do, but a lot of us do it. No, like yeah. I know, I mean, so people who are here, so what we need is that we need to just give them awareness. Mm -hmm. And they're like, have you talked to the people that you're trying to give a solution to? So ask whether that's exactly what you want. Yeah. You know, so it's very important that at every step of the way, whether it's in policy, whether it's in care, whatever, it's always a partnership between whoever the party is and people who live with mental health conditions. And for me, that is really the core of what we do at She Rights Woman. Mm -hmm. Ensuring that people who have mental health conditions are empowered enough about their own mental health mm -hmm. conditions, their own journeys, mental health generally, and can also bring meaningful, you know, contributions to the table as well, irrespective of what it is. Okay, I want so I wanted much. to ask Awa uh, quickly, <laughs> what is the what in your opinion what is the biggest challenge uh, that you think from your experience, also from interacting with young people, that you think young people are you know going through, that's making them susceptible to you know wanting to uh, uh, you know thoughts yes and having suicidal thoughts and being depressed and all this. What are some of the, the biggest challenge? Biggest challenge. We've mentioned a lot. I've heard mm -hmm. a lot already. For young people, that yes, some for young people in particular, challenge. I think they are not being heard enough. I don't feel a lot They're of times they have outlets to mm -hmm. truly be heard. There's one thing to speak and talk and chat and post on social media. Yeah. That's one thing. That's not proper conversation or communication going on. People want to be heard. You know, like sit down and listen to exactly. me. Just what I'm saying matter. You know, they want to feel like they matter. They want to feel like what they're feeling is valid. Mm -hmm. And what we constantly have is a society that constantly tells young people that, you know, you don't know what you're saying, you poor mm -hmm. this, I beg you, you know, that kind of thing. And it causes a lot of pressure because you people may not know it. Like I sat down in a conference recently where I was a, I was the oldest on the panel because we're all we're all on the same on the same board, but I was the oldest on the panel and most of my colleagues were from the generation Z. So that's typically like twenty years and below. You know, and when you sit down and you hear their kinds of challenges, and I'm asking myself, I'm just how many years older than you people, and I and can't you can't relate. Understand it. <laughs> you know, so I can only imagine what your parents are having to go through, listen to these things they are saying. So they'll just be so like, what are you talking about? Is that a problem? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's that the world has changed. The world in which we were born into is very different from the world in which our parents were born into. And generations are changing really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, so if two people are five years apart, trust me, they're older. Mm -hmm. And this generation is struggling to be heard. They're struggling for a seat on the table. Mm -hmm. They're struggling for validity. And I find that when you just give young people the opportunity to just speak and be heard, 
her. Mm. So powerful for them. Wow. Like it feels like half of the problem is solved. Mm. And they just put them at the table, you know, put them at the food on the table and let them run for it. Yeah. 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 I think that's very that's yeah. very, very insightful and very helpful. Yeah, insightful. And I hope that, you know, uh, people are listening. And so, um, thank you very much for sharing that. How can people find you? Um, I'm a she writes woman, at she writes woman across board Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at she writes woman. She writes woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. One last word, Dr. Dorothy. One last word, short, 15 seconds. Oh, let's let's keep creating the awareness. Every opportunity, um, have a get together is an opportunity to create the awareness on mental health. Okay. Health is not complete without mental health. There is no health without mental health. Thank you very much, Doctor Osas. Okay. Uh, for me, I would just say this: uh, uh, my co right quote, uh, <laughs> "What gets us stuck in life, essentially." Sorry, my favorite quote: uh, "What gets us stuck in life, essentially." is actually less of what we don't have control over and more of what we have control over. Mm. Uh, however, a lot of times our imaginations deceive us to think uh, what is really getting me stuck and pushing me to hopelessness is why I don't have control over. Uh, I put it this way, like we put in energy psychology, universe will not allow what is beyond your capacity to come in. And even scriptures, book, we run, and Bible confirm this. So please, wherever the challenges you're facing is what we get you through it or get you out of it is actually within your control just shift your focus away from whatever you don't have control over and shift it back to what you have control over your response to the situation and i believe uh it's a matter of time a lot of things we are in a rush to get out of it. they are actually designed to build up it's mm-hmm. just the pain might not be easy so just like labor pain a woman that is in labor if she decides that i don't want to pass through the pain the baby will, the baby die. will come so it's about to back something in you if you endure the pain and it you and you don't see it as negative focus on what you have thank you very much how can people find you all right on instagram at dr underscore ssz and on twitter at drossz so twitter drossz that's dr osas yes instagram dr underscore ssz dr dorothy how can people find you on, on social media okay. you have started again <laughs> every time <laughs> okay the instagram is a dorothy jeff Jeff Ed, Dorothy Jeff Ed, and Twitter is uh, Dorothy Jeff. She knows all by that. Why don't you just say it? Eh? <laughs> just say it. She knows it. <laughs> Every time she's waiting for me. <laughs> so, 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 last word. Yes. So, my last word is take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself because a healthy body will give a healthy mind. Yes. Connect with people is very essential. You're not an island. Live in the present. Tomorrow has gone. Tomorrow, um, um, yesterday has gone. Tomorrow, don't be worried about. Live now and then take one day at a time. At a time. Most importantly, please let's ask for help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ask for Especially help because mm-hmm. once you ask for help, the person next to you may just be the solution that you have. You look. Mm-hmm. You've been searching for in Sokoto, meanwhile it's in Shokoto. So for us, those are very key, and um. Health, like you said, is wealth, and obviously there's no health without mental health. So every day, get up, dress up, and show, show up. up. Oh, <laughs> lovely, nice. So across the board, I am Dr. Memuna. I, I am, am Dr. 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 Memuna. Across all boards, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Thank you so much. It's been such a great conversation, a very rich conversation. Um, I, for me, I want to, I believe in when we have conversations like this, let us have action points. Mm-hmm. It's not about, it's good to talk. It's great to have the conversation. It's great to create the awareness. How can we now go on, take actions and do something? I believe that everybody sitting here, we have, we have the capacity. We have some sort of leg in mm-hmm. to be able to push for some policy, even if it's just Lagos State first or something, and say, we want mental health. Let's start having that conversation. Mental health being taught in secondary schools as a course you know as a subject Mm -hmm. yes mental health education Mm -hmm. so let's that's my own charge to all of us everyone here like let's push for some some of these things to help because we know that this treatment we don't have it just now Mm -hmm. it's not enough but and there's also the awareness for the provision of 
you know, the NHIS mental health. So let's push it out amongst ourselves. Let's take it upon us to do that. And next year, we come for another symposium and we check out what we've been able to do so far. Thank you so much okay. for joining Thank us. You. Has been, if you have questions, you can, you know, send them in to at Novo Health HMO on Twitter and on Instagram at Novo Health Africa. And, um, tomorrow is World Mental Health Day. Day. Please tag us on Hash Novo Symposium. Yes, and, and share some of the things that you've learned. We'll also have this today. available as a podcast. Um, uh, on youtube sorry it's going to be available on youtube so if you joined us late you can go to the, uh, youtube and you'll be able to get everything that's been said today uh at noble health yeah noble health noble africa noble health africa, noble health africa. Noble health africa. Noble health africa. Noble health africa on youtube ah, sorry i i yeah, no, somebody's claiming me to know my hand is even fast me i don't understand sort of it, but, I, but i got it now i've shamed you <laughs> but you're not sure thank you so much thank you have a beautiful evening <laughs>